All right, I wanted to do a video yesterday, but I fell asleep with my daughter, which I've done a few times, so I'm going to have to do it this morning. Now, the markets were slightly higher yesterday, nothing too ferocious. It was a bit like the day before in terms of how much they closed higher, not even up 1%. However, they did start the day red uh, on Friday, and they closed green pretty much near high of day. So that, that does count. So you can expect Monday further continuation, probably the same degree, right? So about half a percent up, but still it's not that strong after the CPI report. And to me, we're going to hit resistance, right? I think I count on charts anyway. News counts, but charts always trump news for me. And now we really are down to charts. <laughs> Um, I need to check if there's any really crazy news uh, next week, especially early next week. There's probably are a few data releases coming out, but still, it's going to be the charts unless there's some geopolitical or black swan, which, to be honest, will favor the downside anyway. I remain bearish. I always will until the fundamentals change. It's just you can technically see swings either way. Now, for me, the swing to the downside across the board is coming we have had a nice move up, some stocks more than others. The large caps, the big Apple, Microsoft, and, and all these um, big boys are still struggling. They're not up that much. Whereas the, the small caps that have been already obliterated, also assets like Bitcoin that have been obliterated, they've moved up quite a lot. So that's more like short covering, and that's not what's going to keep a market going higher. Having said all that, let's look at the S&P. So close, slightly green closed higher than the yesterday's high of day or pretty much at high of day i think this chart speaks for itself i see resistance here that's not much higher from where we are what is that just sort of over one percent so and this is a rough downtrend it's probably not completely perfect but i think you get the picture quite literally so that's where i expect the SP to go maybe on monday Nasdaq, same sort of thing. That's probably also about 1% away. That really did close high of day, 2%. That also helped uh, Bitcoin. I'll get to Bitcoin later. That had quite a nice move. That pretty much made the move I thought it would do. But yeah, here you can see we're sort of trying to reclaim former, uh, former support, which is acting as kind of resistance. I mean, they're all following each other. The S&P is already within its old trading range. Dow Jones is towards the higher um sort of ceiling of its former trading range so that's really strong i mean it wasn't really you know it was up a third of a percent we've still got one maybe one and a half percent until it's it's move higher the dow has just been strong for a long time but still if it fails to break this and comes back down it'll look as bearish as the others you know when you've got that'll be a double top if we ignore this and then, you know, we flush this and it's just like this pattern that I drew a few days ago. You know, it's just going to be stair-stepping down whilst the others flush. So really nothing changes. The Russell 2000 has been strong, but that's also because the small caps have been obliterated. You know, lots of short covering. I can show you some of those later, the sort of the Pelotons and, and all that have been down 85, 90%. They moved up 50% in the last few days. But, you know, how much is Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, how much are they up? 10% or something? So that kind of explains why the Russell's had a nice big move. And it's strong, you know, it's probably even stronger than the Dow, you could say, although it's nowhere near as high. And we've got some resistance coming up, not just the horizontal, but the descending. So let's see what happens when we go here. If we even get here, I think we might test it um, across the board. We'll go up maybe 1% on Monday. And then let's see. To me, it's not the strongest reaction to a positive CPI. So nothing changes for me. And we've had a nice big move up already, so certainly not the time to buy for me either. The VIX also, look at this, it's broken. I, I don't even want to spend more than 20 seconds on this. Um, but, you know, that also is not exactly a reason to, to buy stocks when the VIX is so obliterated. Let's move to yields. Yields were sort of sideways to up, which, okay, the market was up, but so normally you'd expect yields to be down, but the market wasn't up that much. And on top of that, the yields have been kind of slaughtered the last couple of days. Maybe that's a bit of a strong term, but you know they've they, they've been lower, let's say. And then you've got key yield uh, readings like the ten year that are basically at support. So it makes sense to move to bounce from from support. And this was really perfect. So for me, the ascending support on the ten year. I mean, 
it wasn't perfectly drawn, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever. You get the point. And also the horizontal support of the tenure. So you've also got, and they both coincide at the same sort of point. So the tenure bouncing here, which makes sense. And I think the third year was maybe even better. Look at that. I mean, that's really perfect. Let's see. Uh, I mean, if this starts to flush the ascending, then obviously we've got support here, but they have they have an effect on each other. So they sort of pull and push each other either way. But generally speaking, the yields have found support because they've come back down from their pop. So that explains why yields were up despite the market being up. But yields were up stronger than the market, I would say. So yeah, especially with the long end of the, the curve. So 30, 10, the five trying to reclaim its its support that it lost. So that's because of the, the influence of the 10 year. I did say that might happen. The two year also bouncing just from below support. So trying to create that sort of support here from a fake flush. The one year sideways hasn't, you know, hasn't dropped it from its support, hasn't popped above its resistance, very tight range. I think the two years really going to decide the one year. But anyway, the point is yields were basically sideways up, bouncing from, from support, I would say. So that's that's good to see, in my opinion, for, for, for the bears, I'd say. Um, let's look at the dollar. The dollar, similar to the yields, they've the dollar's come down. It's also got an ascending long term ascending support. So that should be credible and pretty strong, at least hold for a couple of days, unless there's some crazy news or geopolitical event. So we've got a sort of attempt to bounce. Now that wasn't a green day, but you know, this I expect this to sort of curl and go back up and test former support at least. Uh, we do have some. The euro also, you know, finding some resistance on this ascending line that always acts as well, always it typically acts as resistance when it's visited the first time. And then if you break above it, then, you know, it's kind of irrelevant. Then I would delete the line, but it's doing what it should. So the euro resistance should help the, the dollar finding a bit of a bottom. And the Jap okay, the Japanese central banks just there's that's a story in itself. But let's just look at the the dollar coming down against the Japanese yen. So we flush this range. It looks like we're going to go down here, but I don't see even a, uh, if if the dollar comes down against the Japanese yen a bit more. I don't see that acting as a crazy headwind for the dollar overall. The DXY. So I still think the DXY will be able to hold its its support here even if we come back down. And then if we do come back down and test this, we should bounce higher too. So I still think the the thesis is in play for the dollar to basically bounce from where it is. Let's look at commodities. I really want to get to gold and silver, but let me start with copper, sorry. So copper, you know, extended move. I don't see tremendous resistance. You could call where it is kind of resistance, but I, I wouldn't say there's any real resistance around where it is it's just pretty extended so you'd have to look at the general commodity complex the dollar and everything else i do think we will come back down um commodities in general they've had a nice move everything's had a nice move up and the dollar i think will bounce so i wouldn't really be buying copper related assets around here natural gas having said what i just said natural gas this entire range for me is a buy to be honest i would have bought at four I would have bought a three point. I mean, I would have bought a four or three point five. The whole area for me is a general area range, but here you've got it even cheaper. Uh, yeah, this is probably related to the weather or something. But for me, natural gas is a buy, so even cheaper here. It has flushed its support, but still, that wouldn't stop me from buying. Uh, I have my own natural gas stock, which hasn't come down much, but I heard some news. Um, which I heard a podcast with the CEO and I kind of feel like buying it. And even though the stock hasn't come back down much, much, the commodity has. So I might even, I might even buy the stock now just for a bounce play in the general commodity. That's something else. Uh, but basically I'm bullish natural gas. Uh, let's look at oil. Oil, moving up with the markets, it's also testing this descending line. I think oil is strong buy even here. I mean, I said it down here, but you know, I thought if it gets here, it's an incredibly uh, strong buy. But you know, you should be buying above that because, in anticipation that it doesn't get there, 
And even where it is now, I think it's a buy because I think we're going to test 90s. May even venture above it. So maybe you test A9, then 93. But I think you've also got the strategic petroleum reserve that needs to be filled up. So that's going to provide a floor, an invisible floor. And I think the Biden administration is willing to buy in the sort of 60s. And I, they said it, you know, so you've got people buying above it. I think I'm, I might be wrong about that, but it doesn't matter. For me, oils are buy even higher than, than where I said it was below. Let's look at gold and silver. I'll eventually cover the other commodities at some point, but I, I want to do a quick uh, video before my daughter wakes up. Gold, yeah, so gold, incredible. You know, since this breakout moved up here, I mean, I kind of think I called the levels quite well. It's just I sold into them and gold has just, you know, fooled me, uh, even me, the bull. Um, I'm trying to be cute with my sort of swing trades. And to be honest, should have just never sold and just hold so and just held the whole time so all those people who hold gold uh long term and don't trade it if you've been buying the the drops well done you really deserve it but anyway so you know we came out of that cpi report it was 1880 i remember was the was the resistance it's still there and i said look you got 1900 and you got 1920 1900 acted as really temporary resistance intraday resistance i think or just for one day acted as resistance so yeah that was that was correct it's a psychological number it's a small technical level but really 1920 is the level and we basically just smashed through so now we're, we close at 1920 really at 1920 we even ventured slightly above very bullish for me this is a a pretty significant level i mean obviously there are levels above I'm really surprised that we're able to break out of an ascending pennant like this. I mean, typically you get a breakdown, really, you get a breakdown of these and venture back up. So to break even higher, this is seriously extended. I don't know what the RSI is on this. I can check that on a different site, but gold is has had a major move. I expect it to come back down as I've expected for a while uh, because the dollar, I think, and the yields will go up and the market will go back down. But this is a buy the dip, and now you're just going to have to move your buys higher, you know? So I was initially going to buy, and I don't buy gold or silver, I buy the miners, and I'll get to that. They've underperformed the metal, thankfully for me, because then I've, I've, uh, I haven't suffered a loss in potential profit as much as I otherwise would. But for me, gold, I mean, I'd probably be light buying miners when we come back down to this, this range, 1880 then I would have to really see what the miners chart looks like, but then I'd probably be buying around 1800, between 1800 and 1820. I just move that a bit higher. And then here, if we even get here, and this I, I, could, I should really delete because this is now pretty much um, unrealistic. If we get to 1700, forget it. Yeah, so I'll be looking at these ranges on the way down, but just to say gold, very impressive. I don't even want to put the resistance points. Obviously, you can see my lines for the resistance. I wonder why I did this one. Uh, it's been general resistance on the way up around here. Yeah, I mean, you can see my lines for resistance, but I don't even want to place them because I really don't think it will go higher than 1920. So Monday, next week, I think we'll just sort of do some sideways action, maybe venture a little higher, and then just put a top in and come back down because this needs to have a breather. And I think the ascending support will actually come into play again because it broke out of this sort of pennant here. And, oh, sorry, one minute. And uh, I think it will come back into it. You know, there it broke out of it and come back into it and it will typically hit the lower ascending. Let's see, I'll delete this because it's just annoying, but it's the lower ascending that, that I think will come into play. Silver, however, so gold's been very strong. Silver has continued to have a lot of resistance. So at least at this part, I was correct in terms of it not going higher. So we have this horizontal. I'm not even going to draw it because it's too obvious that all these tails here are just acting as, resist as resistance. So I'd say 2430-ish area, strong resistance. Obviously, we've got these two descending long-term resistance lines, which means it it's more credible, it's stronger. So even I did say, you know, even if we go higher on CPI day, I still expect 24 to 25 to act as very strong resistance. And that's still the case. And because I think gold will come back down, 
I don't think still will go higher. Although it's had the best closes it's had in a long time, right? Since since I mean, since the whole period of the bear market. So there is that, you know, this candle, very strong close, but still it's it's you know, it's underperformed, it's still tired. Gold is now more tired than it was. So it's, I do expect, despite this sort of positive close, I do expect it to find its weakness again and then eventually come back down. So I'm going to keep these support zones where they are. And finally, the miners uh, continued higher. They were strong. They've underperformed, right? They've underperformed. And they've had their little 1%, 2% moves every day. I mean, it adds up. Uh, and now we've basically hit the resistance point. Maybe I should leave this here so I can see the candle more. But, you know, the lines speak for themselves. We're hitting resistance. You can see all these tails here. Yes, we can go a little higher up to here. And there are certain stocks acting stronger than others. I mean, I've got, you know, a lot of sort of 20-ish uh, miners that I own. But the sort of the Newmonts and the Barrett Golds, they've acted pretty strong, I would say, closing in a higher day. They, I think they've really carried the index higher more than other stocks. But they're also getting to their own individual resistance points. So I do feel like I felt for quite a while that the miners are tired despite not moving up as much as they should, I think the whole sector needs to come back down. You know, it needs to have a, a healthy sort of mini wipeout and then let's go back up depending on the dollar, the yields, the markets and all that. But again, I feel like the miners are hitting their resistance and I will be buying on the way down viciously. I just will start buying very lightly on first support, which I think is here. Um, we will probably go right through that. I just want to get some something back in it. and then ascending support in the pennant, a bit like the gold pennant, and then etc. on the way down, and it's got another ascending support. Uh, but I want to see the you know the bearish candles come in before I get excited about that. So far, I'm really just focusing on how much more upside it's got. But for me, this area is is basically resistance. I haven't sold. Did I sell anything yesterday, Friday? Um, I don't think I did actually because I've already sold enough here and yeah, I didn't sell anything on, 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 fr on Friday. So if there's a little pop high, I'll probably trim a little bit more. If the miners, if my holdings have just gained another couple hundred dollars, I'll just trim it, keep it back to its minimum level for the move back down. GXJ, very similar, obviously. So also closed near the high of day also has resist closed basically at resistance. You could say just above even, and it's got another resistance point just higher. So I don't know how much more of a percentage move, 4%. That's asking a lot. So we might not get there. I mean, gold will really have to move higher. I don't know, 1950. I can't believe we're at 1950. That's incredible. Uh, but, you know, I mean, look, gold's basically here, right? Gold's, I mean, let's look at gold. It's there. So for the miners, just to be very general about it, you'd expect us to be sort of here-ish, you know? And that's, and normally we outperform on the way up, sort of 30%. So for me, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm happy. Otherwise, I would have sold even more. And like I said, I would have lost potential profit. Um, so anyway, looking for some, looking for a move down. So that's the miners. I think the chart speaks for itself there. But everything, you know, everything is intertwined. You've got the markets, you've got the dollar, you've got the yields. You've got commodity space in general, precious metals, geopolitics. It's all coalescing. I do think the sectors, everything will move down. You know, yields and dollar back up. The VIX back up. I mean, that's broken. But And, you know, mine is down, essentially. So still looking for that move down. What I am looking, the one positive is that I think if we do have a move down across the board, it'll be pretty violent. And you might have the GDX, GXJ sort of down five six percent on one day and then bam you've got your all this um bearish engulfing candle and then everyone's looking forward to another 10 percent move down so it can be you know staircase up elevator down I i'm hoping that comes into play across the board let me look at bitcoin that's had a crazy move so we broke out of this descending um yeah so i did think eighteen thousand four hundred uh was a was a resistance point and then once we broke out of that i moved this up all the way here and actually overnight so on friday we closed there 
the miners had another big move. The the crypto miners, I, I own Hive. That's that's had a, a crazy move. That's gone up more than 100% now. And then because I fell asleep on a Friday before I could do my my video, I wake up and I see that we've hit basically 21,000, which is where, you know, you can see resistance is there. I mean, the next one is going to be here. The next one's going to be here. I don't really need to, there's no secret to where I'm drawing my, my resistance points. I don't think, however, we're going to move much higher because I think it needs the NASDAQ. I mean, I did say the Bitcoin will move independent to the markets. And it, it showed strength. I mean, it, it showed strength even when the markets were slightly red. They, you know, Bitcoin was green. So it has been sort of disassociating itself from the general markets like the NASDAQ and just acting on its own technical momentum. So that was good to see. That's what I thought would happen too. But now that we ha we've had a pretty big move outperforming the markets, I think it's going to have to look back at the markets and say, okay, now your turn, you know, prove that we can go higher or or whether we go lower. Although this breakout, it could be pretty significant. I remember old breakouts in Bitcoin where I thought, okay, that was a nice pump. Now let's go back down. And then no, 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 that was a, a major bottom. So I'm not going to call it a major bottom because I don't think the market's done flushing. And I think, you know, if the Nasdaq's going to go all the way back down to new lows, you can't have Bitcoin just go up. Uh, you know, at best it will go sideways. I'm not sure what to expect from Bitcoin, actually. Will it pump higher and maybe even test 25,000? I think it's asking a bit too much. So I think for the weekend, we'll just hover around the highs, let's say, 21,000. And we're going to wait to see what the market does on Monday. And if the market goes higher, then Bitcoin goes to its next level around 22,000, whatever you want to call this, 23,000 even, 22,500 or something. 25,000 should be major resistance though. It's prior support, not the strongest support, but it is, especially because it hit that as resistance. So 25,000 for me is major resistance. I might even delete this just to make the point even more. So I think really the ranges we're looking at are 21 to 25,000 on the upside, but I think we'll hold around 21,000 for, um, for the weekend at best. But that was good to see. And on the way back down, well, we'll have um, 18,000 and then we'll have the old, actually it won't even come here, we'll hit the, the descending line. So if I really had to draw on the downside, I would just say sort of here-ish for now, if that makes sense. So that's Bitcoin. I'm not gonna go through all the altcoins. They've all sort of had similar breakouts. I don't even remember drawing this line, but you can see that acted perfectly. That was even easier to trade. Uh, what I will cover very quickly are just the miners, just very briefly, um, because I had a lot of fun with Hive. Where is it? Yeah, I think my daughter deleted Hive. I was looking at it earlier. Uh, okay, well, it doesn't matter. Well, I'll just type it in. So Hive, which I'll need to add back to my list, um, had a crazy move, similar breakout. And you can see it's had a, a major run. So this really moved from 140 all the way to, to 358. I mean, that's a, a major run from low to high, which is actually, you know, let's call it 150%. It's actually more similar to the run it had from here to there, 150, 60%. So although it looks like it's got more to, to go, uh, it's kind of done the same. And you have others, you know, other crypto miners that's ha that have, had similar sort of breakouts, whether it's Riot. I'm not going to bother looking at the percentage moves, but you can see they've all had similar patterns. Mara, etc. I don't know what Rio Tinto is doing there. Um, Bitfarm, etc. So anyway, the crypto miners had a major run, followed the Bitcoin chart, plus their own technical breakout. And that has to look at now... Bitcoin and the NASDAQ, I think, from Monday onwards to, to see whether they've got more room to run. I did trim Hive majorly because I saw it did 150% move. So I pretty much took out between a third and a half. Uh, but anyway, it's not too much money. But, you know, the still after moving 150% up, the, the stock did gain quite a lot of value. So I trimmed it. I think that'll do for now. I might do one or two videos during the weekend looking at individual stocks including gold and silver stocks, as well as uh, large caps, 
you know, I want to cover the fact, you know, stocks like Peloton, which I thought were a bit of a buy coming down here. They've had major moves. This doesn't look like much, but, you know, when you've moved 50%, that kind of explains the Russell moving quite a lot. I mean, not just Peloton, but some of these stocks have moved quite a lot, whereas other stocks like the Googles, you know, they've moved sort of not even 10%. Microsoft, okay, a bit more, but Intel... Apple, okay, Intel was okay, but Apple, not really. So I might do another uh, video just dissecting that, but I hope that was useful. Basically, summarize is, to summarize, I would say, let's wait till Monday, obviously. Let's see, let's see if we can break out of the descending lines because for the S&P and the NASDAQ, which to me are really the major two movers because the Dow and the Russell are kind of near their resistance, you know, we're very close to resistance. We've moved a lot. The reaction to the CPI report wasn't that strong. I thought we'd be already touching here on day one, actually. Maybe not closing above it, but touching it. So I think it's weak. Yes, it's still been green closes after being red for a bit, but it's just too weak for me. So the bear thesis stays intact. Anyway, I won't repeat myself. I hope that was useful. Good luck. Enjoy your weekend. And I might do another one or two videos.